What I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to show you how I eventually got that kind of sag and that setup using those Bronco Indians. For a start, they come in two different types. You have flat links and you have horning links, right? They've got little guide horns on them. All right, now you'll need them in pairs always. So you need one flat link, one horny link, one flat link, one horny link, okay? Now they come with 12 each on a sprue and I figured out I needed 66 for a complete run. So that'll be 33 pairs. So I'll need about six of these little sprues and I'll have a few left over. That's okay. Now I do 12 at a time of each because I don't like to do too many at one go because there is some cleaning up to do. Now one of the things with the cleaning up is um, one, I found it's easy just to cut them straight off the sprue with the knife because there's not much point using your sprue cutters and then knife. They sit nice and flat. You can cut very easily. Plus, there's a nice little indentation in there that you can get your knife into right on the edge of the little tab and cuts off. But when you cut them off, you're going to end up with a problem that you've got two square areas together because your cut is vertical. And that means that when you try and bend these links later on for um, sag or just for a natural look, as they bend, they're going to snap apart or they're going to break and they're just not going to work. Plus they have little pins in there which allow for the rotation. Because what you're really trying to do is track links should be like this. Two curved surfaces and they rotate against each other. All right, That's the principle of a track link. So you need to get that profile right on the end of each link. And that isn't that hard to do. What I found is because the parts that you're cutting are on the inside in all cases and the two outside tabs on either end are, um, haven't been touched, you can use those as a profile. So you can use your something like a little diamond file here and you can basically run it back and forth gently using the outsides as your profile and you'll only take off the excess plastic for the inside tabs. And then you'll get that nice circular profile, which is going to make it so much easier later on for these tabs to be able to work with the tiny little pins in them and they will rotate and they will sag naturally because the sag I managed to get, I did that without any spaces, um, without having to do anything other than let the pins do their work and it naturally sagged into place. How about that? All right, so how do I assemble? Well, I use my tried and trusted method of some tape Sticky side up, down on my cutting mat, which I hold in place with a few other pieces of tape. And then the important thing is I use a metal, not plastic. I use a metal rule because it's got a good amount of weight and it won't stick with the um, plastic cement. And I put that over the top edge of the tape, which holds everything in place and gives you a nice little workable sort of jig to push your links up to. Now, putting the links in is fairly easy. The horny ones you can pick up by the guide horn. Nice and easy. Now, don't go vertical and snap them in like you do with magic tricks. Because if you do that, you're going to break those little pins which allow them to pivot. And that's really important. Whether you're going to make them as workable or as I'm going to do, I am going to cement them and then bend them. Those pins really help in getting the natural sag. So come in horizontally and slide them in. Now for some reason, that works better than vertical. When you go vertically, you snap off those pins. I know, I tried it a couple of times and was pulling my hair out. When you go in level and slide in, maybe it's a gentler sort of movement. Don't know. Maybe because you're holding the two together. Don't know. But whatever it is, it works. So that's the slidey thing. Now, to put the flat track links on, well, you haven't got a guide horn. So I use my little trusty wax pencil and I use that to pick them up. And then again, I can get it in fairly close. And then using my tweezers, I will again slide the little fellas in. And the low-tac tape just holds everything in place. So there you go. That's all there is to it. So I'll get on with this and I'll finish all of this run of 24. And um, then afterwards, I'll show you how I got that natural sag. And it was so easy with these workable track links. Well, it's taken me about another half hour, but I've managed to clean up all the links and then assemble them along my rule. There's a few that are hanging over the end and I didn't stick those down because I thought I'd show you exactly why it's really good to have those pins in. These aren't glued, right? Those pins work. 
they actually make these tracks workable. And that's going to come in really handy when we create the SAG. Now, I thought I'd show you a couple of other things quickly before I uh, go to the point of gluing it all together. Now, as always, none of this is glued, except for the links. The links are glued, right? But, and I'll take the uh, top off so I don't wreck anything while I'm doing this, and I'm bumping things as usual. The, um, the wheels here, all right? Well, they'll, uh, they just lift off. All right. And I've done that deliberately. Oh, that one I had a little bit of white glue in there just to uh, show you how the sag was working. Oh, go on. Tiny, tiniest bit of white glue, and it's as sticky as all hell. So I can pull all my wheels off right, without wrecking this model, hopefully. <laughs> and that means that I can then take my track links off in one piece. And I won't attempt to take that back sprocket off on camera because that one's a bit tricky, but I will, I will take it off. So they pop out. Now actually I do need to show that back sprocket. But now my track links are off. See? They're holding their shape, they've got their waviness, and I can paint those and weather those up just like I've done with every other vehicle I've made. 15 minutes have elapsed, mere seconds for you in the Magic Television, and I am ready to start lifting these links up. Now, I do that by using my tweezers. Bit of a bugger, they've stuck to the mat here. And I always put a pencil behind to stop them from sticking back down, because as they come off the tacky tape, they sometimes fall back down, and I've found then they stick, and then that becomes a real bloody mess. And But if you do this, you're getting them off the tape, and they, they have time to sort of realise they shouldn't be there, and they don't go back. All right, so a simple matter of running, and you're probably going to go off camera here, but don't worry. Just run the uh, tweezers underneath, and they come off nicely. And as you can see, they're, they're cemented together. No problem there. There's this a nice big long piece of plastic now. But it will have some nice properties, which I'm about to show you. Okay, so... Rotating that off. There we go. There's my track link length. Now I've got my wheels on. I've used a tiny bit of white glue for the looser ones, which were wobbling around, so hopefully they'll just kind of hold them in place a little bit for this exercise. Most of the others seem to fit nice and firmly anyway into their little rods. Now, I'll put the top on first, because I want my uh, join to be hidden underneath. So, I'll fit those, and the important one is the back here, where I had to uh, cut that piece out. Sorry, I'm, I'm blocking your view, but it's necessary for me to get my hands in so I can see what I'm doing. And this back sprockety one is a little bit fiddly, until you get it right. There we go. That's how it wants to be. Okay, so... That will wrap around there now. This one. And then that's going to be my join there. Okay, now I'm going to cement that join up while we're doing this, and there's a good reason for that, which will become apparent fairly soon. So, into those joints. I'm being quite liberal here, but this is one that's hidden. It's well hidden down there, and it shouldn't present a problem. That's looking all a little too tight for the moment, isn't it? And that's not the look that I got on the other side. You're saying, no, it doesn't look right at all, Harry Denny. Bear with me. Now, I'm just going to use blunt end of the tweezers. Now, are you noticing what I'm seeing? These links, because they've got those, because they've got those pins in, they like to bend. They like to sit in positions. And because I've got the little bit of tackiness now, they try to bend and hold positions without much else. So I've got the waviness that I wanted. It's very easy to achieve with these Bronco linkable track links. And they really assist 
in getting a nice natural kind of sag. Mm-hmm.